Sending out email notifications is one of the most common requirements in application development. In this video, I will show you how one can easily compose and send emails in our systems. Before I start, do note that our systems at the moment is running a technical preview uh, where one can set, create the emails and send them out from the mobile and reactive web applications also. In my video, I'm going to use the traditional way of sending out emails. So in case you are curious about trying out this new way of sending emails, uh, do access the link I have added in the description of this video. So in my case, as I mentioned, I'll send out the emails in a traditional way. So to, things, uh, to set things straight, uh, I have, I'm under a reactive web application that has one entity called customer. I'll quickly go ahead and create the usual listing and detail screen using the accelerators. So with this, I'm going to have a listing screen that looks somewhat like this and detail. I'm going to leave them as it is, no, no point in changing them. Uh, what I want to do basically is when somebody clicks on the save button, when they're creating a new customer or updating details in the existing customer, I want to send out an email. So right now this is the query, it's, uh, this is the logic of updating the customer or creating it. What I will do first of all is to make this table public. I do want to be able to access this customer from the email itself, maybe for querying or something. You will see in a while of what it means. So in this case, just remember that in case from your emails you want to do some logic, some operations, email can also have some logic, then uh, you would be required to access this table. Of course, you don't require it all the time, but in case uh, you want that, just make sure that you make those uh, entities and tables available. Now in traditional model of sending email, you have to go back to your uh, new application wizard from scratch make sure you choose traditional web app. Now, traditional web apps used to be uh, the default way of creating applications before our systems move towards the reactive web development. In this case, I'm creating the emails library as a new traditional application. And within that, I'm going to create this first module. This is same as how you develop any web or mobile application. But there were some differences last time. For example, in traditional web applications, you were able to compose applications. And that's, I think, exactly the same thing that now is available in technical preview for reactive and mobile applications. So if you see here for email, there's already a flow there, but you're also able to create emails everywhere. Now to do things properly, let me first of all add reference to that uh, customer's entity because I do want to retrieve some data from it. So sample app. Although you don't need to do it in case you're just sending a static email. But in my case, I want to just show you how to send even dynamic emails. So I'm adding a reference to this customer table from the sample app, which is open here side by side. But right now I'm working in my traditional emails library. The goal here is maybe in my project, I want to use this emails library as a default place where all the email templates are stored. Thereafter, I'll go ahead and create an email. Let's say we call it process. Now, these emails are exactly like screens, so you are able to add input parameters. For example, I can have maybe search it, and I can have customer ID. Since we've added the reference to the customer table from sample app, uh, the platform is already able to identify the data type as customer identifier. Now, with this logic, I'm also able to add a preparation. Preparation is where we can add a piece of logic. Now, in this case, what I want to do is run a query on the customer table, retrieve the details of this customer whose ID I'm getting in the input parameter, which looks somewhat like this. So customer ID is equals to the local variable, which is what we are getting as input parameter. Now, with this, we are able to get the details of this customer that now we can assign to maybe a local variable customer make sure it's of type customer. And then from preparation, I can use an assignment operator to assign value to this customer, which is what we're getting from the query above. Now, this customer that you see here has the information of, has all the information from this customer ID that we receive. So anybody who's going to call this email will pass us the 
subject and customer ID. Using the customer ID, we'll run a query. We'll retrieve all the information the customer, and we can then use this information to compose our email. How does that look? So double click on the email in case you're not there. Uh, first of all, for subject, maybe pass in the input parameter subject. That does the job. And then you can compose your email by using all these widgets available here. So all of these widgets are still available. So you can say, hello, uh, customer was just created or updated. Make sure you process it. And then we can display the details of the customer. So here you can go display customer name using expression by the way so on this expression we can provide the value which can be any combination of customer name plus new line plus uh, maybe from which country again new line to go to the second line and then maybe just the phone number and that's it so after this uh, the line we are displaying the information here you're also able to display this uh, in the string itself in case you want just use the expression to build your uh, email content and thereafter I'm just displaying this. all right so this will be email content but just understand that all of these UI widgets are still available in case I want to use them to create a nice formatted email I can do so even CSS is available here too now in the next step imagine my my, my step my, my uh, email content is ready with this I can now go back and the logic and as I mentioned we are going to create use this project as a single place where all my emails are and under that I can now add a server action this is for processing email for processing customer so always try to give relevant name in my case it may or may not be relevant but yeah still there so uh, from th the goal is from this uh, function this server action I'm going to call this email so all those parameters which were input there we have to make them input here as well customer ID subject and maybe one more additional the email address address okay and we make sure that you make this function uh, the server action available make it public why to make public because later on we're going to use this server action call this from our sample application from the customer edit save button thereafter we'll provide the logic of what happens when somebody calls this function so in case of traditional applications, they, they used to be this widget, send email, we just call it and then provide the, provide the email. So email is what we composed earlier, process customer, this was from the interface tab. Two will be the, uh, the two parameter, two email address, that goes here. Make sure all database data types are correct. Subject would be coming from subject and customer ID will be the customer ID. And that's it. So like this, you're able to create a set of emails here. Go ahead and create any number of emails. Make sure that you create server actions that allows you to wrap those emails into a, a function, a, a server action, which then made, when you make public can be accessed from other applications. So I'm now going ahead and publishing this traditional web application that has one email at, as of now. So just to note, uh, the part I did for adding a reference to the customer table and curing is not necessary for sending the emails, but in case you want to make the email content dynamic, like what I did in my case, I wanted to retrieve the information of this customer from the table, then I had to add a reference to the table itself. Now, I'm switching to the sample application, which is where we were saving the customer record. What I will do is using the managed dependency, look for the emails library, it will, I'm expecting to see the server action here, email. I can see the input parameters, which I set that there and apply. Now to trigger the email now, what is left for me to do is to call this function. So from emails library, I have to call this and I can pass in the information that is input parameter there. Customer ID is the one that just now created or updated. Uh, subject can be 
uh, this can also be made dynamic again with a combination so something like this so customer this is how I can make uh, my email subject dynamic clear or updated sorry so that will be the subject and then to email address uh, let's say I I can get it from dynamically from there also but let's say in my case I hard code it to my test account that's it I think it should work now let's go ahead and publish it now while this is publishing let me also mention that in our systems you have to first of all set the uh, SMTP server settings in case you don't know how make sure you watch this other video whose link I'm going to put in the description so in my case, I've already updated the SMTP settings. In case you want to see how it looks, you should access the service center just by clicking on the cog wheel. Uh, let me log in. So this is uh, the admin console. We call it service center. And then under administration, you have the email settings. Okay. So make sure you provide these settings. I'm using Mailgun. It's a uh, SMTP service that is easy to configure. I'm using that here. Now with this, what I will do is launch my application. Log in with my simple account. I do have authentication there. Wrong password. Okay, we're in. Now, as you know, uh, this is my customer listing page and uh, the customer detail page. If I click on the save button, let me pick another customer whose name is noticeable. So Talus Incorporated, because I made the subject dynamic, we look for an email that has Talus Incorporated in the subject. And when I save, this will save this record as well as will uh, trigger the email sending. How do we check whether email is sent or not? We can go back in service center in service center we are also able to see under monitoring various logs from our application and one of the categories for this is emails if you access the email you will see that one email is sent just now Talus incorporated it was sent to my default account and is using the SMB details of sender and is sent already so with this i can go back to my sample account let me give it a refresh So as you can see, the email has been received, Talus Incorporated, and the content is as per what I constructed or composed in the email in traditional web. The customer name, country, and the phone number with the content I have. Thanks for watching.